Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different than we normally do, um, but still along the same lines of the mechanical work that we do on the other videos. Uh, today we are going to be changing the oil in a Coyote CS2410. Um, as you can see on the bucket it says SL2410, but I believe that's the number for the bucket itself. And there's my pup with a bone in his mouth running around the property. Um, so, we'll start in just a second. I'll pop the hood up and uh, show you what we got to do. Before I get going on the oil change, uh, one of the things I do want to make a comment about is uh, we're well above our hours for monetization, but we're way below on subscriptions. So please make sure you subscribe to the link uh, for our channel and uh, we'll keep doing stuff on this tractor because there's a few other projects I got to do um, on top of the 53 Chevy that we're going to start working on soon and the XJ and the KL that I have been doing projects on since the beginning. Thanks. So if you own one of these tractors, I'm pretty sure by now you would know that you have to uh, go on the left side of the tractor and pull on the little uh, lever down here at the bottom. You pull it, it pops the hood up uh, and that releases the me mechanism so that it can come up. Okay, now access the oil filter, which is back in there behind this plate. You have to remove this plate. There are three bolts that hold it in place. There is one on the back corner right here, and the other two are a little bit more hidden. They're actually on the inside of the plate down at the bottom. There's one right there, and there's one back there. You will need some extensions and stuff to get it. It's on the back corner of the plate at the base on the frame. Um, this plate has to come off to be able to get that filter in and out. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are three bolts. Um, I've already taken the front one off. Uh, it is 10 millimeters and it's uh, backed up with a nut. Both sides are 10 millimeters. Um, on the top plate up here, on the top of the, the where it attaches to the side of the firewall, um, this one is just the bolt, no nut. It's also 10 millimeters. The crazy thing with this thing, and I think it has a lot to do with the quality of the engineering, um, the back bolt is a 12 millimeter. Um, why 12 millimeter? I don't know. Most uh, vehicles that come into the U.S. are um, set up to where their sizes are near standard, which something close to a half inch would be a 13 millimeter. Um, they've set it up with a 12. And uh, I'm, I'm showing you this because this is the easiest way to get in and out of uh, this particular bolt. I use a giant, giant extension on a wrench so that I can get it above the arm and then I back up the nut which is behind the uh, mount for the uh, 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 the bucket where the bucket attaches on um, there's a big bracket right here and there's a nut right behind it so that's how I get that one off it's a 12 millimeter both sides um, and when you go to put that back in it's a big pain so that's what I'm going to take off. When I get this off, then we'll start doing the actual oil change. Okay, so as you can see, we're now on the bottom side of the tractor, uh, behind the, the front axle. On the bottom of the drain, uh, the oil pan, is your drain plug screw. It is a 17 millimeter, and it has a copper crush washer in it. So, uh, you break it loose, and remove the screw in the washer and run your oil into your drain pan. This doesn't take a whole lot of oil so you'll see it run for a little while and then uh, it'll be done. A lot of it gets held in the oil filter. Um, it'll run like this for a few minutes. Um, if you want to you can jack the rear end of the tractor up to get more fluid to move towards the front of the pan. In this case, it doesn't really matter as long as you just let it continue to run out. Alright, so now we're back up on the top side uh, where the oil filter's at. Um, and if you can notice, the oil filter is um, actually a Fram filter. It's not uh, one of their stock filters. And there's a reason for this. And it's actually kind of hard to find. But the stock filter that comes in this thing is uh, 30 to $35 if you go through the dealership or even if you try and find it on eBay. It's not any better quality than a regular old oil filter. 
and that oil filter is uh, five to six dollars. Uh, uh, the prices may go up depending on the area, let's say up to ten dollars. It's still significantly cheaper to buy a regular old oil filter than it is to buy uh, their brand of oil filter. Okay, so to get it loose, I use oil filter pliers. I'll just break it loose. Now, these do make a mess because of the fact that the oil filter is close to a bunch of other things, but the easiest way to get them off and get them out is just to unscrew it, make sure your drain pan is underneath the area where the oil filter is, and then unscrew it until it comes completely loose, and dump the oil from the filter in, take the filter out. The oil filter that goes on this particular tractor, which is the important part if you're going to be using a um, Fram filter, which this is going to be upside down because of the angle that I have it at. It's a pH 3614. It's actually a really, really common filter. Um, it's used in a lot of uh, four-cylinder engines. Um, in this case, it's a three-cylinder diesel. But the tractor uses the same kind of common filter. So I would suggest getting one of those over uh, tracking down the dealership or trying to find one on eBay. Um, they're much, much more expensive online. Just Fram or whatever your brand is that equates to a pH 3614, which is a super common filter. Okay, so now that everything has stopped dripping on the bottom, put the drain plug back in. As you can see, there's a little bit of oil um, up along the frame here. This is caused by the oil filter being in a position uh, too close to the frame. You can take your time and figure out a way to get the uh, oil to drain in a different direction or put a guard up so that it doesn't run into there. Um, this is it's tractor. I'm not super worried about it. A little bit of oil isn't on anything that's going to cause smoking. So I just let it run on the frame. So when you put this on, make sure just to go snug. You don't want to like over crank it. It's got a copper uh, bushing underneath the screw with a little bit of a uh, rubber piece along the edge. If you over crank it, if you over crush it, you're going to end up messing that up. And then you're going to have to track down one of those. Um, and if you're worried about the oil that came off from the oil filter, just wipe it off. Okay, so next we'll put the filter on. Okay, for our chosen oil, um, I'm using uh, Delos Synthetic Blend 1540. This is a special diesel engine uh, oil. Um, as you can see down here, it says diesel engine oil. Um, and then my regular Bram 3614, pH 3614. Um, the one comment I do want to make about this is normally I like to pre-fill my oil filters, but because you have to take the oil filter and turn it sideways when you put it on, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to pre-fill it. Um, so the only thing that I'm going to do with this in this particular case is I'm going to take a little bit of the oil and get it onto my finger and rub it onto the seal so that it helps get the seal to um, seal to the uh, engine. If you don't, um, they have a tendency to not seal properly on any vehicle, not just on uh, this particular style vehicle. Okay, so now the oil filter is off. Because this is a tractor, um, I want to go around the face plate of the oil filter and I want to gently clean all of the oil off of the uh, frame of the engine. The reason why is because um, this is a tractor and it's full of dirt. Um, all around the outside of it is dirty. You want to make sure that you don't get any of that dirt into uh, the engine itself. Um, and then bring your filter up into place and screw it on until it goes to where it stops. 
and then lightly snug it up and then go one quarter turn past where you stopped until the arrows move to the next section and then you know you're a quarter past and it's just a little past snug. If you over crank uh, the filter you will push the oil seal out and um, it'll leak. So there you go, oil filter's on, drain plug's on, uh, now we just got to fill it and put that cover back on. Alright so up inside the engine bay uh, the oil filler is behind this box, this is your air cleaner. Um, you just unscrew this plug behind it and down on the top of the head, drop your funnel into there, and fill it. Uh, this particular tractor takes 3.8 quarts, which is a fairly small amount, doesn't even use the whole amount in the jug if you buy the jug of it. So you need to fill it and make sure you're paying to the amount of quarts because I have a camera and a light in the way I'm gonna stop filling it and take all this stuff off so that I can actually see what I'm filling to. One thing I do want to comment on um, before I get too many comments about it I filled the oil through the top cap here which you can do. There is also a more conveniently placed oil plug on the side of the head uh, nearest the oil filter side. Um, you can put it in either one. I did it through the head because it was easier to get a funnel on it. Um, trying to get a funnel on that one down there and having it at an angle wasn't going to make it easier for me to uh, get the oil into it. So you can do it through either one. You just have to make sure if you put it in through the top that you give it a couple of minutes to soak down into the oil pan. Um, it takes longer when going through the head um, than it does down here. So this is that panel that you take off uh, to access the oil filter. The one thing that I want to suggest before um, I, I actually install it, and I can't really install it because there isn't really a good way to get a, uh, a camera to show what it is that I'm doing. But um, as you can see, mine is a little bit bowed and bent. Um, it's a tractor. These things happen. Plus, it's easier to move it a little bit so that you can get in and out of stuff. The one thing I suggest is that before you uh, put it in, the, the back hole back here, the one down on the bottom down there, take the bolt that goes in it and drop it into the hole and then take that and put it put it into the position where it's got to go and fish it down in. That's the one that you can't really access even with the panel being bent out a little bit which is what I did to it because it was easier for me to get to the, the holes. But I would put that one in, drop the thing down in, and then get the nut on it from the from the from the bottom side. Then go back and drop your front one in, and then this one is threaded into the bracket. So it's the last one that you do because all you have to do is push the thing forward and and bolt it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on, and then I'll show you with it all back installed. All right. So um, to get this thing on, drop the bolt in the back. It's a 12 millimeter. Uh, put the nut on on the underside. Then drop the bolt in the front, uh, put the nut on the other side, wiggle everything until you get it in place, and then put the uh, bolt in the top, uh, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Um, now that I have it on, installed and loose, I'm gonna tighten up the bolts, and uh, we'll then fire it up and see if we have any leaks. Okay, so now that we have it done and running, Get it up to a good running temperature, and then you can go ahead and shut it off. Mostly what we're looking for is oil leaks on the bottom. Now, on the bottom, in my case, you see a spot here. This spot is not actually caused by that. It's caused by the fact that I got oil onto the frame. And I had already cleaned it up beforehand, which is why nothing wiped up when I rubbed it. Um, you're going to look around, make sure that the oil filter doesn't have any oil around it, and that there's nothing leaking off of the drain plug, which is that guy right there. So everything looks to be good. Um, at this point that it's been running you want to make sure that the uh, engine has gotten up to temperature and then you want to check your um, uh, oil uh, dipstick make sure that you've got enough oil in the engine because it's hard to tell where 3.8 quarts is and it looks like we're right there in the middle of the line so 
this guy is done. So close her up and wrap up. Okay, so that's it for the uh, oil filter change on the uh, Coyote CS2410. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please drop them in the comment field and I'll answer back as soon as I can. Obviously, this is a little bit of a um, step away from what we normally work on, but I own this tractor, so it uh, makes sense for us to make videos on it. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more, too, in the future, so uh, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll keep making more videos. Thanks for watching.